Thank you everyone for tuning in. For VPK by Maharshi Ayurveda, I'm Valerie Brown, and this is the Ageless Brain webinar. Have you ever forgotten a name when you walk into the room or you forgot why you're in the room to begin with? Whether you're concerned about your memory or you simply want to sharpen the great memory that you already have, combining the best of modern science with ancient Ayurveda, this knowledge can actually help with cognitive decline. So joining us today is integrative physician, recognized Ayurvedic expert and author, Dr. Nancy Lonstor. She's written the book, The Women's Best Medicine and The Ageless Woman, and we're excited, we're hoping that she'll tell us a bit about a new book project that she's working on now as well. So well, welcome, Dr. Lonstor. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Vail. I am really excited to be here. And Yes, I am working on and almost finished with a book on the same topic we're talking about today on how to keep our brain healthy, especially after 40, especially as we get into our later years, that it's a big concern today that actually um, about one out of seven people will, if things continue, uh, get Alzheimer's disease. And this is really frightening, of course. And it is now become like the third leading cause of death in our country and in the UK, it's the number one leading cause of death. So, you know, obviously this is a huge problem and very frightening one that I'm just really excited about because there's actually now uh, an evidence-based way to stop, to prevent, and to even reverse this cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. We are super excited to hear what you have to share with us today. So I want to ask you um, a couple questions to start off with. So you've been focusing your work and teaching about brain health, I, I believe, for the past year. So can you tell us more about what that work entails? Yes. Um, I actually first heard about this discovery just a little over a year ago. I was having dinner with a friend of mine who was invited by uh, a researcher and colleague in the field of, of health and medicine. And she was telling us about uh, actually a situation where a friend of hers uh, started to go down the path of Alzheimer's in her early 60s. And she had taken care of her mother and seen her decline over 15 years and said, look, I'm not gonna go this route. And she called her friend and said, I am decided to take my life. And her friend said, wait a second, wait, wait, wait. You know, I think there might be someone who could help you. And actually there was a doctor, uh, Dr. Dale Bredesen from UCLA Department of Neurology and the Buck Institute of Aging, who uh, was a colleague of this, this lady. And she knew that he had been researching Alzheimer's for over 30 years with drug trials, but he had come to the conclusion that one drug is never going to cure Alzheimer's because there are over 36 mechanisms that he identified in the laboratory that actually contribute to cognitive decline. And he says any one drug can't affect more than two or three of these 36. So to affect them, we have to do something more than a drug. We have to stop the cause of this deterioration, which can be inflammation, can be oxidative stress, can be lack of hormones, lack of nutrients. So it could be toxins. It's like, you know, we've always heard there's so many things. Oh, is it aluminum? You know, <laughs> is it now? Is it uh, herpes virus? I mean, there's something in the news every other week. Could this be the thing? Well, you know what? It's not just ever going to be one thing. And it's probably he identified with the doctors he began to work with, over a dozen in every person. It's never just one thing. It's a combination of assault on the brain and it's different for everybody. So anyway, this lady uh, invited, invited her best friend to see Dr. Bredesen and he said, look, I've never done this, tried this on patients because the drug companies won't fund it. She said, well, I'll be, the, I'll be your guinea pig. And she started a very comprehensive approach which included a transcendental meditation, which she had let lapse because she was so busy in her stressful job, and uh, some hormones she had stopped, and 
uh, yoga and meditation, as I mentioned, a uh, good diet, anti-inflammatory diet, a regular routine. Have we, any of us heard these things from my <laughs> <laughs> getting plenty of sleep and, and getting exercise and all of that. So within four months, she had a dramatic turnaround. And today, it's seven years later, this lady has no symptoms whatsoever of Alzheimer's disease, of cognitive decline. She teaches at a major university in New York. I actually met her a couple months ago, and she came to a seminar that I gave in New York City, and she spoke, and she said, look, I turned this around, and you can too. So that was, that was my introduction, and then I, I studied with Dr. Bredesen himself at the Institute of Functional Medicine last year, and I've been using this approach now in my practice for the last uh, almost a year now. And I started to see in my patients, because uh, it takes a few months of implementing recommendations, but I've started to see some pretty dramatic turnarounds. I have my own, uh, what he calls patient zero, the lady who was the very first one to turn around. And I can tell you that it's one of the most fulfilling things that I've ever done. Wow. And of course, I use the Ayurveda hand in hand with the uh, other multimodalities Dr. Bredesen suggests, which actually he integrates Ayurveda, and he had published already two papers, one on Ayurvedic herbs in the brain and what those herbs can do for brain cells in the test tube to prevent and, and even counter uh, Alzheimer's. And also he, he noted that the subtypes of Alzheimer's, which I can go over with you today, they actually parallel quite closely the Ayurvedic Vata Pitta Kapha. Wow. You believe it? Yeah. Yeah, this, this sounds like an amazing breakthrough for all of our brains. <laughs> oh, so, it is. <laughs> preventing and even reversing Alzheimer's. And I, I feel like we didn't think that was possible. Absolutely not. It, you know, um, Dr. Bredesen quips that he said, um, everyone knows a cancer survivor today, but nobody knows an Alzheimer's survivor. Yeah, it's been, it's been an, a progressively irreversibly fatal disease, and unfortunately, often taking maybe even decades of, of continual decline. It, it's not a it's not a good thing. Nobody wants it. Everyone fears it. And I'm fortunate enough to say I do now know an Alzheimer's survivor. She's not she's she doesn't have it anymore, and and I'm seeing that now in my patients. So. That's incredible. So tell us what ad, what advice do you have for everyone out there who's listening today? Well, I'd like to just share with everyone a little bit of background knowledge about how this discovery and how does it work that something that was considered to be a fatal disease with no cure and irreversible can now become a treatable thing and a preventable thing. And the bottom line of that is that you have to know yourself. You know, I mean, know thyself, right? It's an ancient maxim. But in this case, it really means know your physiology. And it, it takes identifying what kind of factors might be at play for you behind the scenes that you're not aware of. Maybe you have a dozen or a dozen and a half of those factors that are kind of gradually eroding your brain because it turns out the changes that precede knowing you have Alzheimer's can be going on in the brain for as long as 20 years before. So, and there's a cause. There's Nobody loses memory for no reason. And that's, that is actually encouraging. It means if there's a reason and we can figure it out, we can intercept that and we can turn things around. So I'd like to share some slides if that's okay. Oh, that'd be great. All right, so I actually developed a six month course last year because I wanted to share this knowledge. As you can see, I'm a little bit excited about it. And I wanted to share it with everybody that had been patients of mine or that have taken um, courses or my quizzes. And I, I just wanted everybody possible to avail themselves of this knowledge. And it takes months of implementing these recommendations. Actually, that's what Dr. Bredesen teaches. But to tell you the truth, I think with my patients, who many of whom are practicing transcendental meditation and doing Ayurvedic things, that if they have a, a problem with cognitive decline and we correct those factors, they've been getting better, many of them, in weeks. Uh, even one lady, two weeks, all her symptoms went away and they're, they're still gone, it's months later. So I won't say it has to take months, 
but I designed the course so people could do it over time, step by step, not feel overwhelmed by the changes that they are inspired to make, and that they could begin to see the benefits during that time. So, so this is a picture here of our brains, a diagram, and it shows the, some of the most important aspects for memory, such as the hippocampus. And it, these are, this is deep um, in our brain, just inside of like our ear, like right above our ear. This is about where we're looking. That's where a lot of our memory centers are. And in Alzheimer's disease, usually that preferentially starts to be damaged first. And it's not coincidence, I think, because the hippocampus is very sensitive to stress, even to just mental and emotional stress. And, you know, I think we all have a lot of that in our current lifestyles. So that's a setup to begin with. So here is the key molecule. This is like the kingpin of Alzheimer's. And what it is, is you see the little squirrely, spaghetti-like looking molecule in the middle is called APP, amyloid precursor protein. It means that is not amyloid itself, but if that molecule which sits on the cell membrane of every cell in the brain, many of them, if it is triggered to break into the four parts, as you see on the right, I call those the quarreling quartet. They actually make a mess in the brain and they stimulate amyloid production. Now, if it goes to the left, that's the dynamic duo, and the dynamic duo, those two parts, when they fall into the brain matter, they actually help the, the neurons grow. They're like a fertilizer for our neurons. So this protein will go one way or another, and what determines it, I call it the barometer, because it's like the environmental pressure. If the pressure is nice and low, and there's a lot of nutritional support, hormonal support, not a lot of stress, well, the dynamic duo will get formed and the brain is supported. But say we got exposed to a lot of air pollution, we breathe in a bunch of toxins into our nose, and Ayurveda even tells us the nose is the gateway to the brain. So inhalation Alzheimer's is now a big thing, especially in some, some cities like Mexico City with a lot of pollution. Or we um, just are under a lot of stress, we're eating bad food, fast food, trans fats, anything that promotes inflammation, anything that promotes a stress on the brain is gonna cause this molecule to go to the quarreling quartet and cause the brain cells to protect themselves. Think of a, a turtle. I like to think of a turtle. If a turtle is threatened, what does it do? It pulls in its legs and its head and it hides in its shell. Well, basically our brain cells do the same thing. Things get better, those brain cells can come back. It's sort of like the turtle can take out its legs and its head and then move on. And what we need to do is we need to change the environment. We need to change the inputs that this barometer is getting. So the signal to our brain is, hey, the coast is clear. Let's grow and let's recover. Let's, let's be strong and connected and, and allow memory and learning. So I like to say it's all about balance. And Bredesen makes that point. He said, you know, it's always balanced because the brain is actually pruning itself and reducing some neurons as part of getting rid of memories that we don't need every day. And it's also growing new memories. So we want to have a balance between these two. We have to have them in balance. And I love how Maharishi Ayurveda says balance is a key to perfect health. And in fact, that used to be on the the Vata tea box, it was one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's just a, a complicated slide, which is supposed to impress us that, look, there's that APP, that's the molecule in the middle. There are as many as these 36 to 40 factors that are influencing, influencing it chemically and molecularly at any one moment. It's like a roof with 36 holes. We can't just plug three of them and expect the, not to have water come in, right? We got, we got to plug them all. Hmm. Now, a very interesting concept that I think we should all keep in mind uh, is something that I learned from one of my Ayurveda mentors. This is Dr. J.R. Raju, and he taught one of the very first pulse courses for doctors here in this country in the late 1980s. And I was there, 
And I remember from that course, he told us when we're taking the pulse, Ayurvedic pulse, he said, always keep in mind that what you're feeling is not just what is wrong in the body, but the body is always trying to heal itself. It's always working to bring itself back to balance. So what you're feeling is also the healing response. And interestingly, what Dr. Bredesen, this brilliant researcher observed, he said, amyloid is not a villain when it's in balance. Amyloid is this plaque that gets laid down in the brain as a response to all these challenges and is like a glue, it gums up the brain and it causes these cells to degenerate. Well, he said it's not inherently bad, it's actually part of our immune system and it's there to protect us. It can actually sequester or engulf like viruses and bacteria and heavy metals and help protect them from the brain tissue. So it's only in excess that it can cause problems. So I love that because it reminded me of the Ayurvedic principle that the body is always trying to heal itself. We don't have to think about something like amyloid as being this, this great villain that's out to get us. We have to think what is triggering the excess of this response by the body and let's remove the bad influence that's coming in that's, that's overtaxing our system. And by doing that, our body will naturally recover and start to perform better again. So I think that I just wanna talk a little bit about the three subtypes of Alzheimer's and a bit about how some of the Ayurvedic herbs and habits can address these. And actually one of the things, um, this principle that no one loses memory for no reason it means that one of the things that I recommend in my online course and I guide people with is how to test yourself, how to go out and get the blood test either through your local doctor or some of them you can get online, many of them, how you can test yourself for those 36 factors and identify what's out of whack for you and correct it now before any more damage is done because probably there's something challenging you, more or less. Maybe you'd never go to Alzheimer's, but maybe it's accelerating your aging, or maybe just sapping your energy, or maybe giving you brain fog. So we wanna identify those things now and correct them. And actually, all of those factors, we can kind of subdivide them into three main subtypes, although you see six here. I'll, I'll go into them a little bit. So the first is inflammation. So inflammation is a cause of Alzheimer's. But of course we have to look at what's causing the inflammation. You know, often it's diet, right? The bad things we're eating. Or maybe it's, um, you know, staying up too late and getting too much cortisol or not enough sleep and endless pressures and not enough exercise. All these things can promote inflammation in our body. So that has to be identified if it's there. And of course, we want to take measures every day to reduce inflammation. And in fact, Ayurveda is helping us with that because one of the ways inflammation can damage the body is through oxidative stress. And I think everyone knows what a free radical is, or at least we've heard about free radicals. We know antioxidants are great, we want to have antioxidants in our food and we want to eat our berries and we want to have our omrit collage because that's one of the highest, most potent antioxidants on the planet. So I just mentioned some of the things that we can do to quell and quench inflammation. And indeed, um, some of the herbs of Ayurveda, such as Bacopa and Ashwagandha, actually have shown in the laboratory and in animals that they can prevent and they can actually even lead to reversal of the amyloid process. So they help the brain clean itself and they help it uh, modulate and tone down any over inflammation that might be happening. So we don't know all the mechanisms by which that works, but we do know that some of these herbs are extremely also high in antioxidant like Intelligence Plus, for example 
is very high in antioxidant effect and has been shown to help reduce oxidation of fat in the brain. And omrit, especially the nectar, has been studied in detail for its effects on the brain in the laboratory and in animals. And indeed, um, the imp there have been very impressive results. I was just researching that today in the light of all sorts of research I'm doing for this book. And I was aware of this research, but I wanted to remind myself. And Amrit, actually, the nectar stimulates not only um, the countering of it, you know, it doesn't have only its antioxidant effect, which happens to be, by the way, 10,000 times more potent than vitamin C or E, gram for gram. So if you have one tablet of nectar, that's one gram, versus one gram of vitamin C, well, the omelet is gonna have 10,000 times the effect of that one gram of vitamin C. Now that's kind of amazing, isn't it? Well, one of our favorite products for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And it doesn't get a five star rating on Moppy for no reason. I went in, I was looking at some of the testimonials. I was like, yeah, I can relate to all of that. And my patients, they, I'd say the patients that I have that have been taking Omrit since it came out in about 1985, I consistently, you know, this is not a scientific study, but I consistently observe that those are the people, you know, maybe they've been going to bed early, maybe they've been eating right and they do everything right, but they also look. I mean, they haven't changed. You know, there's the tiniest little, little, um, you know, signs of some aging now that they're in their 60s. But really, they they look youthful. They haven't gained weight. They uh, they're just a great testament to the anti aging effects of of Amrit. In any case, this can block antioxidant in block excessive free radicals in the brain. Plus it actually helps the brain's own antioxidant enzymes, such as glutathione, to work better. Another thing is that it showed that when fed, this was an aging animals, guinea pigs, that it actually helped those guinea pigs uh, recover some of the metabolism that was flagging when they get older, just like our metabolism in the brain and through the body tends to get less as we get older, that is actually one of the earliest precursors to Alzheimer's and decline of those neurons is when they start losing their energy production. And I was astounded. I did not notice that research in the past to see that it could actually lead to reversal in that and those hypometabolic areas of the brain starting to recover their normal metabolism. That is really, really impressive. And not only that, when free radicals attack fat and fat becomes aged and breaks down, it can accumulate a pigment called lipofuscin. And this pigment is a marker for oxidative stress and aging in the brain. And the animals, these aging animals who were fed the omelet they actually had a significant reduction in that lipofuscin in the brain. So somehow the brain was stimulated to clean that out. And that is extremely impressive to me. I don't know of any other, any other herb or supplement that's ever been shown to do that. Mm -hmm. So this was a real reversal of aging in the, in the, in the brain of the guinea pigs. And I, I can only think that it's got to be good for our brains. And I take Omrit every day myself. And when I, when I really want to boost, I take a double dose of nectar or either of them. And Dr. Lunser, will you tell us too, we get asked a lot about the difference between the tablets and the paste. What, what's your preference? And okay, you preference? well, let's talk about <clears throat> the nectar because nectar mm -hmm. originally was a paste and the Ayurvedic tax that's the recipe. It's with ghee and sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we also now, because many people <clears throat> avoid ghee and sugar or for some reason, one or the other, Marsha Ayurveda products years and years ago made a tablet form of the paste out of just the herbs. Okay. Now ghee and sugar. And they, a lot of the tests were actually done on the tablets. Some of them were done on the paste, some of the research on the tablets. They found them basically comparable. In fact, some of them, the tablet even did, did was stronger. <clears throat> but 
Um, I would say it doesn't really matter if you like one or the other over the other, go with what you like. Of course, if you have a medical condition that prevents you from having sugar or ghee, just take the tablet. Um, if you're working on your cognition, take the tablet because you have to really be careful with sugar. Your body, actually Alzheimer's is also considered, this is type 1.5 on my slide here, diabetes of the brain. That Alzheimer's occurs in many people as a result of lack of metabolizing sugar well and becoming insensitive to, to, to insulin. So. I would recommend the tablet if you have any issue like that. Mm. Um, now, there's another formula that's the tablet, which is a little round tablet called Ambrosia, but that's a, that's a different tablet. Even though it's called Amrit, it's called the Ambrosia. It's a different formula. So what were you asking? Uh, what was I asking about, uh, just about which one you preferred and which one you recommend? Does it just depend on the patient? Yeah, and this is, and you're talking about the nectar, right? Whether to yes. take the case form or the tablet form? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, I pretty much, uh, if somebody is young and they have really great metabolism and they love the paste, I, I'm fine for them to take the paste. But if they're maybe over 60, unless they're really super healthy and exercise and, and for some reason, and they love the paste and do fine with it, I'm fine with that. But for most people now, I recommend the tablet form of the nectar because I know that sugar and ghee may not be handled well, especially if people are, are prone to cognitive decline. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for your insights on that. Sure, and um, the, next, the next subtype is, is sugar, basically caused because people's bodies stop handling sugar well and they become insensitive to insulin, which is our sugar handling hormone. Mm -hmm. And actually insulin is a growth factor for the brain. So if the brain, like the rest of the body, starts becoming resistant, meaning it doesn't respond to insulin, it actually misses out on a very important growth factor. And it gets more prone to amyloid deposition and to damage, especially by, by sugar, which actually ties into inflammation and oxidative stress. It's all connected with metabolic dysfunction. So, so you know, if you want to avoid cognitive decline, especially if you're over 50 or certainly over 60, you've got to stay away from sugar, get it out of your diet, refine carbs, all of that stuff's got to go. you got to go to a whole foods diet, got to favor fresh vegetables, and if you want something sweet, a whole, whole fruit, a whole date, you cannot have these concentrated sugars. And then I'll just mention the, the last two in brief. Trophic means, or atrophic actually, means lack of growth factors, so hormones and nutrients. I want to mention to everyone here, because I know a lot of you are vegetarian, you have to get enough vitamin B12. That's something that can be deficient in a vegetarian or vegan diet. And while you might get enough in spirulina if you take it every day and take quite a lot of it, I really find that people do best if they take a B12 supplement. And if you have any cognitive decline, memory problems, or wonder if you're B12 deficient because you've been vegetarian for a long time and you've never taken B vitamins, I would actually recommend you get your level checked because if it's really low, you have to take it seriously and not just kind of like, okay, I'll take one once in a while. That, that just won't be enough. And vitamin B12 deficiency has caused uh, Alzheimer's-like syndromes in some of my patients before we discovered, or they discovered, they came to me with their problem and we discovered it was low B12. So very, very important. I can also cause numbness and tingling and balance problems. People come to me thinking they had arthritis in their toes. It was numbness because of, of B12 deficiency. They've come to me with depression. It was B12. They've come to me with um, just balance problems. One lady thought she had MS like her brother. It was just B12. So it can, it's, it can come in many disguises, so you have to make sure you get enough B vitamins. Zinc is important for vegetarians especially. Almost everybody I'm testing is low in zinc, which is important for the brain. Um, also, protein. Uh, many amino acids are very critical for enzymes and uh, other factors that the brain needs to grow and neurotransmitters that it needs to communicate within itself. And 
you know, I think, you know, in America, we think, oh, people eat too much protein. And that's probably true. But if you're vegan, or you're vegetarian, you have to be extra careful to get enough, especially if you're older, or you have more physical activity, you need even more protein. So I would recommend that you make sure that you get at least uh, 50 grams a day. And it varies a little with your body weight. Some people may need more or less. And you might need more if you have surgery or you're fighting an illness or you're getting medical treatment. So um, I'm just mentioning, because I thought that it wasn't really a problem. But when I started to test people and look at their amino acids and see how low they were, I realized it was a really big problem. And when people repleted or they replenish their protein on a daily basis, many of them had more energy and mental clarity and focus, even if they were still in their 40s and 50s. So, so the last thing is toxic, um, heavy metals, Lyme, chronic Lyme, Epstein-Barr, viruses, herpes virus, all these things have been found in the brain and stimulate amyloid production. And one of the things I wanted to mention about toxicity is you really kind of need to get tested for it and that you can test for inflammation, a special kind that happens due to certain kinds of toxins. And also just cleaning up your life. If you have kind of put off getting into organic, this is the time to do it. Glyphosate has been shown to be very bad for the gut and our gut lining has a lot to do with our brain lining, the, the blood brain barrier. We get leaky gut because our gut gets inflamed from chemicals and additives. It actually puts inflammatory compounds into the blood which affect the barrier between our blood and our brain and cause toxins and inflammatory promoting factors to leak into our brain. And that's been shown to create inflammation and amyloid in the brain. You know, just like Ayurveda says, we're all connected. Everything's connected within our bodies. And the gut and digestion is key to health, as Ayurveda has always said. So I could go on and on. We could talk for hours. My, my course is 30, 30 episodes, and, and many of them go on for more than an hour, special interviews. Actually, I interviewed Dr. Bredesen, it's fascinating, Dr. Anne Hathaway, a hormone specialist about the role of hormones and bioidentical hormones and the role they can play to help our cognition. Fascinating knowledge and research. So mm -hmm. I hope that... I wanted, wanted to ask you, so last year, remember that you had your online course, and we had a, a lot of, of our audience that took the course too. And um, you say that you've heard some great results from the people that took the course. Can you tell us about oh, yeah. what you saw or what stories you heard and how's the course going now? Yeah, the course is going great. I mean, people, some people are still finishing because everything was archived and recorded so people can continue to listen on their own. And it's been so popular and it really it's filled with so much knowledge presented in a step-by-step -step way. I've got such great feedback that I'm making it um, uh, available again this fall. Now it's going to be a self-paced course that you can take at your own pace, but there'll also be an option that you can have a live webinar with me once a month along with participating, if you like, in an online forum. So you can hear, you can you know, chat with other people and exchange messages and, and see their posts on their progress and share recipes and whatever you like. So that's, that's an option. I, I just wanted to say in closing here, I, I wanted to give a few tips, kind of general tips. You know, I think we all know most of these, but this is really important for your memory. You know, eat plenty of organic, fresh vegetables, berries, olive oils, cut out the sugar. You got to get away from it. If you start eating lots of vegetables and legumes and, and all these whole foods, you will probably, most of my patients experience within a week, you won't even be thinking about sugar. That addiction goes away as soon as you get it out of your life and you start eating really healthy foods. Eliminate bad fats, processed stuff. You know, I can't tell you how many vegetarians will be eating these chips. Oh, they're organic, but you know, they're, they're, they're filled with these oils and salt and processed. And I know from feeling their pulse that it's stressing their liver and is promoting inflammation. So stay away from all these processed chips and things. Organic is still not good enough. Eat, eat a whole food, eat a whole thing. Eat some nuts, you know. Drink water, plenty of water. Get good sleep. 
And don't eat before bed. You know, Ayurveda, I remember the Vijas always taught us, you know, don't eat after 7 p.m. Finish your dinner by 7. Well, it turns out Dr. Bredesen has this as an essential element of his program, not eating for three hours before bed, because it's been found that just like Ayurveda says, our bodies cleanse at night. And the 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is a cleansing cycle. And I've told people for 30 years, this is when Ayurveda says it does house cleaning. It gets rid of the waste and the metabolic byproducts from the day. If you eat right before bed or at 10 or 11 or 12 midnight, you are actually bringing groceries when your body's trying to clean the kitchen. So you don't want to mix the two. You want to allow your body to cleanse itself, and then it'll be nice, fresh, and clean the next day, ready to digest and metabolize again. That's called autophagy, self-eating, eating up the waste in the body. I mean, our body, has, it's like a recycling bin. It knows how to get rid of stuff and, and use what it needs and get rid of what it doesn't. Um, there are online games that have been shown to actually improve your memory and that it can be lasting effect for seven years after, even if you're not continuing to do it regularly. I already mentioned protein, B12 in the methyl form is most bioavailable. Vitamin D also, almost everybody's low in D. You have to take, in my experience, at least 2,000 IUs a day to overcome a deficiency, often many, much more than that. And once you've overcome the def deficiency, at least one to 2,000 IUs a day to keep from getting deficient again. And as I mentioned, Bacopa and, Bacopa and ashwagandha themselves help to fight amyloid. And nectar tablets and, and Intelligence Plus also through their antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects and nectar tablets rejuvenating the brain's uh, me metabolism and getting rid of some of these damaged proteins and fats in the, in the body. It's just pretty amazing. I, I'm really proud to have been doing Ayurveda for so long and to see that it's got an integral role here in one of the most profound breakthroughs in medical history that is poised to really turn around the health of our, of our seniors for, mm -hmm. for, you know, for the future. Yeah, thank you for all your work that you're doing, Dr. Lonsdorf. It's a huge contribution to all of us. Well, I really am so happy to have this knowledge and to be able to share it with you and everyone. It's, um, you know, it's just really fulfilling to help people get better when nothing worked before. Mm -hmm, definitely. We, and we hear that often, too, from, from customers and, you know, people in the audience, too, that it's, they, they feel seen, they feel nurtured by the practice because it's, yeah, when sometimes people get here when it's the last thing that they've done, like they've tried everything else, like my, let's try this and it something turns around for them. And it's, Absolutely. I think a lot of, I've had that experience personally too, where, you know, it's like, okay, this definitely worked. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so beautiful. You make that point. And, and I'd like to bring up a couple things. One, um, you know, Ayurveda is really a whole nother dimension. And even integrative medicine and functional medicine today, if it's not including a really good, strong component of Ayurvedic approach to the patient, it's incomplete. Mm -hmm. And there's just a whole nother understanding that is not there unless you add the Ayurvedic. And it's, um, you know, more and more re research is validating Ayurvedic principles way beyond just the herbs. The other thing you mentioned is some of the people on the course. Yeah, some I have not actually officially solicited a feedback yet, but I'm going to. But people have just spontaneously written me. And uh, one thing that came to my mind, uh, one gentleman wrote me a few weeks ago, and he just said, I just want to share my experience because um, I want everybody to know about this course. He said, I was noticing, and he's about 70, and he said, I was just noticing that when I was typing on the computer, I was having more errors than usual, like mixing up, uh, you know, t letters and stuff. And, and I was not as good at remembering, you know, where I put things. And he said, but I really didn't consider it a problem, but I thought I should do this just for prevention. And he said, he realized as soon as he started the course that he was eating way too much sugar and he wasn't getting enough sleep. He wasn't going to bed early enough. So he started to make these shifts. He started to eat more whole foods. He really started to keep his carbohydrate and sugar level um, down and implement some of the other recommendations. And he said within two months, 
he noticed his mind was so clear. He was typing away and he wasn't getting any errors anymore. Mm -hmm. It just went away. You know, that mind body, mind brain connection just started to work seamlessly. And he said, he's, he said, not only that, he lost like 12 pounds without trying. His joint pain and chronic back pain went away. All this inflammation he had, right? And he just thought it was aging, right? No, he didn't have to live with it. He says, as a result of that, I started to be able to take walks, which I hadn't been able to. And he said, I feel so much more vital and so much more energy and so much younger. And he said, everyone should do this. So oh, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, we'll look forward to hearing when we have you back. Uh, we want to hear more about if you do solicit some feedback about the course, how it went. That'd be great. Yeah. Well, people can go, you can go to myagelessbrain.com, myagelessbrain.com, and you can read all about the curriculum. And actually there I've posted, you know, five or six of the, the, the unsolicited feedbacks that I've gotten. And I think, you know, it's pretty pretty encouraging, very, very inspiring okay. what you gain from implementing just even some of the recommendations. So. Nice. That's so wonderful. We'll make sure to put the link for everybody as well. So um, and any final insights or inspiration you can share with us, Dr. Lonsdorf? Well, I think that the main thing is to, I, I like to tell people really getting the testing done you know, you can do all the recommendations and maybe that'll be enough, but you really should get the testing done because maybe you have a B12 deficiency or a D deficiency, or maybe your hormones are so incredibly low, or maybe you're accumulating hormones because your partner slathers hormones on their body and you're getting them and you don't know it. <laughs> and it you know, there's so many things that can go on that if you test and have objective measures, look for inflammation, check your oxidized cholesterol. It's something that Cholesterol doesn't get laid down in your arteries unless it gets oxidized. And Amrit's a potent inhibitor of that. So, uh, but you know, you should, you can check those things. You can see what your blood sugar is, what your fasting insulin is. That's something doctors don't check. But if you check it, you may find, okay, my blood sugar is fine, but my insulin is high. That means your body's overworking and becoming insensitive to uh, insulin and that's dangerous. So you can turn things around. So you can get a lot of knowledge that will empower you, will inspire you and help keep you stay motivated because you got to do this. The stakes are just too high. <laughs> it's a great reminder. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Lonsdor for being here with us today and for sharing all your new insights. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much. Take care. And thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll make sure to provide links to Dr. Lonsdorf course for you and we wish you all good health. Thanks for being here.